Put on your seatbelt. Let's go. All right. Turn up the music. Scream Queens Horror Road Trip Podcast. Ah! That was a good one. That was your final girl, Miss Justine, and I am your sole survivor, Mr. Josh. Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> we are driving out here on the dry, dusty, windy plains of Oklahoma, heading to Bartlesville, you were Oklahoma. About to talk about my Vagina, I guess. Oh, the dusty, <laughs> the dry, dusty plane. That sounds so. like a personal problem that you need to deal with. <laughs> Maybe seek your physician. I decided to make the joke before anyone else could. <laughs> um, and like I said, we're heading to Bartlesville. You want to tell them why we're going to Bartlesville? Um, I guess if you'll let go of my arm, you're yanking on it. <laughs> um, we're going to stay at a wonderful skyscraper in the middle of nowhere Oklahoma it is the Price Tower and the architect is Frank Lloyd Wright he's a very famous very famous early 20th century architect Josh did you know yes you guys all know who Frank Lloyd Wright is he did he designed the Guggenheim he's famous for his uh, organic, organic architecture. Yeah. De designed beautiful homes that he's very famous for. But yeah, out here in Oklahoma in Bartlesville, he designed one of his only skyscrapers. He did two vertical buildings in his time. That but is this correct. one's, I think, believe, considered his only skyscraper. This is his only realized skyscraper. Yes, for sure. So we're going to go see that queen in real life. It's going to be 19 stories tall. In like 212 feet, right? Uh, 221. I got it right here. 221 feet. We're going to go all the way to the top and I'm going to push you off. Oh, okay. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> JK. Send this, send this to the trial. Yeah, send your condolences. <laughs> <laughs> Those two. Uh, yeah, we are going to stay in a two-story suite. We are going to eat in the restaurant and just enjoy ourselves. Go to the bar. Just have a good night. Enjoy the hotel tomorrow. We're taking a tour a of the A very hotel. historic tour. And so we'll have more to tell you about the hotel on the second half of our podcast. Yeah, we are going to get a little learned. So stay tuned for that. But what movie do you think we chose to correlate <laughs> with? Well, you already scraper. know yeah, because you, already you clicked know. on you clicked it. On you know it. what it is. Yeah, we're going to complete our saga. We are doing, finally, years in the making, Poltergeist, un, deux, trois. Three. 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 Thrice now we have covered the Poltergeist movies, the series that we love, uh, have grown up on, you know, yeah. as children of the 90s, the, these movies were playing on uh, local TV a lot, and you know. Uh, they have a local TV cable. Yeah, well, like, that's what I meant, like yeah. local cables or whatever, <laughs> like TNT. Yeah, USA. I don't know if the kids today know TNT. Or USA Network. TBS. Is USA Network even around anymore? Uh, I, You know what? They might have an app. Or they might be a part of like an yeah, app. Something. You know, like you get the Discovery app on top of like Hulu and blah, blah. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm not advertising for them. But yeah, no. we we thought we were going to keep it in Oklahoma. So far, all of our Poltergeist episodes have been in Oklahoma. Our yes. first one was at, I think, the Blue Bonnet Inn. Oh, it was that a bar. creepy haunted bar. Yeah, and it, that was really fun. The second was we went to Geronimo's grave. Yes, we went to his grave, and that was like in Lawton, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma area, just right outside of a, a Air Force base or so, no, a military base. Yeah, uh, Army. That's what it was. Yeah. So we're bringing you along with us to the great, <laughs> in the great state of Oklahoma to do Poltergeist Three. Oh, I thought it, I thought I heard Tangina. <laughs> <laughs> now, someone might show up. We don't know when. Oh. We don't know 
Ow. When the hour will be, but Tangina might appear. I don't know when. Uh, I don't know how. <laughs> but I know something's starting right now. Like Tangina? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to ask for it, okay. I'm not giving it. I'm sorry. I I'm am not ruining, giving it. I'm ruining the element you of surprise. Are. Here I have already thought things up. I'm just trying to give the people what they want, Just I will give the people what they want. Damn it. On my time. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay, so... Yeah, Poltergeist 3, it does take place, <laughs> technically it's in Chicago, and here we are in Oklahoma, but it it mainly takes place in a skyscraper, in a... John Hancock building. Yeah, John Hancock building, skyscraper, and like a parking garage, and, and there's a whole bunch of mirrors, and your mom's there. And I said, hey mom, what you doing in this movie? You're like, what? You're here? <laughs> Carolyn! Yes, my Carolyn! Yes, my mother is Nancy Allen. <laughs> <laughs> After all this time. <laughs> Just kidding. I wish. No, I love my mother dearly, but like if my mother was Nancy Allen, that would be That would cool. be amazing. Yes. Like <laughs> I think uh we're gonna also choose to say Carol Ann as much in this podcast as but you it know what? Is in as, this movie. I was gonna say also has my mom, but also has my daddy Tom oh, Scarrett. Oh, daddy Tom Scarrett. That's right. Well, you guys know we have our daddies. We got Daddy John Saxon. Daddy Scarrett. Daddy Scarrett is joining the team, um, taking good care of us. He just popped in to say hello. He in and that movie. little mm, stash. He just, the wants mustache. To, he just wants to tickle you with it. Oh, well, he wants to hold his mustache close to your face kind of press his cheek up against you there were moments in this movie where he did that and I thought if I was filming with him I would feel both aroused and uncomfortable you know like <laughs> something about like all the cameras around and he's so sensual with me yeah. but then also how incredibly turned on I am by that man we also in Poltergeist 3 get some Lara Flynn Boyle action. Oh, we get debut Lara Flynn Boyle yes. she's come to make her polo Poppin' premiere! <laughs> Her polo poppin' premiere. And this is a good, like, two, three years maybe before even Twin Peaks. Yes. Where she plays another Donna. Yeah. Yeah. Donna, so. Donna, Donna. Yes, so Laura Flynn Boyle is, she's gonna be all throughout Poltergeist 3. So we've introduced uh, Tom Skerritt, Nancy Allen, Laura Flynn Boyle. Those are the, the newbies. But let's bring you back to the OGs of the group, shall we? Let's do it. Who are the OGs? Heather O'Rourke, baby girl. Uh, baby girl. R.I.P. Heather. R.I.P. Baby Angel Forever. Yeah. Heather O'Rourke. Terribly sad. And R.I.P. Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah. Tangina herself. Tangina. The oh, woman who Zelda. gives me life. She was amazing. She lived to like a ripe old age and acted and. Yeah. Won like, our hearts as one, Tangina. Yeah, the through Poltergeist three series. movies. And so she and, and Heather O'Rourke. And in are, Teen Witch. That's I'll true. I'll never forget her making goulash in Teen Witch. But that's our OG crew uh, because now they've been transplanted to Chicago. Well, uh, Zelda, Ruben, Tangina will show up. But let's just begin. We, we open this 1988 film. With a blurry, sludgy... Uh-huh. And you're like, what is this? It's nasty. And you're like, oh. squidgy. A little squidgy. I don't <laughs> like that word. <laughs> and we see a sky, a man working uh, as yeah. a, uh, what do they call those He's cleaning guys? the windows. The He's a window, window cleaner. cleaner. <laughs> yeah, on the skyscraper, but on the outside. And we see on the inside, um, Carol Ann! Yes, Carol Ann. There she is and all her... <laughs> Long hair, pajama glory. Yeah, she's always wearing that set. You know, that is the set. She loves a one piece. She loves a footie. She loves Why a not? onesie. Why not? Why don't you want to button up? Why don't you want your feet covered and your titties covered? <laughs> <laughs> In the same cloth. In the same cloth. She's like, when I fart, I want it to warm my feet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> I mean... Say what you will, but I think that's a good idea. That's it's true. That's, <laughs> and it's it's multi-purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Carol Ann, and she's sitting watching a window cleaner, as you do when you live in the high-rise. Yep. Um, 
you know, I, I, I just have to take a pause here. You know, please, Josh, tell me if you know. There's got to be a schedule. You've got to know when the window man is You're coming. You're like, oh, I, I forgot. <laughs> it, our side of the building is getting clean this week. i got to make sure not to have my titties or my taint out this week. Yeah, Josh is... Everybody knows <laughs> Everybody <laughs> that knows. Josh loves to whip his taint out. Okay? <laughs> like, in the most obtuse of places. Yeah. He's just, like, at an angle. I'm like, hey! Showing us his dangle. <laughs> We are, you're out of control, I'm out of control. That's and we are in the opening yeah. scene of this movie, Out of Control. <laughs> so Carol Ann's watching the movie, <laughs> watch her. So this sweet and it's, little... And it's a, like an old man, and that old man turns into Kane, right, all of a sudden. Yeah, because, you know, when we left off in, in Poltergeist 2, which in itself is such a great movie and brings that Reverend Kane yes. uh, into your nightmares for the rest of your life... And he was played by Julian Peck? Is that I right? I forget. He was wonderful, though, and had such a scary presence. Oh, it could, terrifying. But yeah. he passed away, I think, of cancer. And I feel like, I can't tell if this is the new Kane is really an old man or someone they just put makeup on trying to look like the old Kane. Yeah, well, and then there are several because they we have all these mirrors that come into play. Yeah, and there's like, like Carol Ann turns into Kane later. <laughs> there's a lot going on. But, yeah, so we do have uh, a moment where Carol Ann, she walks up to the window, and she's, you know, been, like, they've been smiling to each other, the window cleaner man and her, but then he descends, like, to go down to the next story, so she wants to see from, like, you know, like. up higher. But when he looks up at her... It's Kane's face. It's Kane's face for just, like, a second. And she's like, She's oh. frightened. Oh. She flees back. She is taken aback. In her very, like, 80s designed room. Yeah, with... lined with mirrors, which is kind of cool in a high rise. It's maybe the only place that can work. Yeah, it's Because at night, a you just, your whole room is twinkling. The, yeah, like and you can look and see the city, you know, yeah, like. that's kind of cool. But it is like, you're just always staring at yourself. Yes, and there's something about having to look at, I mean, I'm fucking I'm like, gorgeous, I'm a but fucking like, burrito yeah, I don't want to see in my room uh -uh. at like 3 a.m. No. I don't want to be shamed by my, all the by mirrors around. Me, me watching myself eat. I am a good looking gal, but I don't want to watch myself taking that huge extra long grilled burrito that from Taco Bell that I've like just drizzled a whole bunch of like extra habanero sauce or the, what's that like Diablo sauce, you know? I don't want that, okay? Nobody but I guess Carol that. Ann doesn't mind it at all. Her whole family loves that. <laughs> loves it. Actually, the whole building loves just yeah. glass and windows and mirrors. It's, it's a theme, and, perhaps. Yes, it might be a theme. And so she looks down, he looks up, he looks like Kane, and she's like, oh my gosh! And then in walks Robocop's lady. Yes, Nancy Allen, the De Palma dame herself. The De Palma muse magician. She is a madam. She's been in a lot of De Palma movies. She was married to De Palma. Mm -hmm. She was also in Hal Ashby's like The Last Detail. Like She's in all the Robocop movies. She's a very... Love some Nancy Allen. Well-loved actress. Yes. She's... Uh, fear. She is such a look. I mean, she's glam. Mm -hmm. But she has these cherubic cheeks. Yes. Just like Carol Ann. So it makes sense that she's playing her aunt. And she comes in. She's like, hey, baby girl. Get, get ready for skew. <laughs> is that, oh, she said skew? <laughs> get ready for skew. And she's like, oh, I don't want to go see that therapist and go to my skew. Well, yeah. So she, <laughs> you know, like she's in there telling her Aunt Trish, which we find out is actually Aunt Pat. Because, because Trish is day class A. Day class A. Did you know that if your name is Patricia and you go by Trish, you're day class A? I mean... And I thought if you went by Pat, then you were like androgynous, but remember the... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like the SNL. laugh? That like, was, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, Pat. But okay, so Aunt Pat is checking on Carol Ann, and then in walks Uncle Daddy uh -huh. Baby Man. Okay, his name and, is Bruce. And they're just newly married, only been married a year. He has a daughter that's played by Laura Flynn Boyle, who is Donna. And they're all cohabitating really nicely. They all seem to really get along. Donna likes Carol Ann, you know, treats her like a little sister. Yeah. And Donna's like 17 uh, or, you know, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. 
and there we catch them like making breakfast and they are just oh. drizzling the cereal all over their chests <laughs> <laughs> but anyway and then they decide all right fine we've got to get to work we've got to get to school and we really find out what this skyscraper is all yeah, about. Yeah, there's like a mall. It's basically like a little city. And yeah. Ooh. Oh, we're going over some. Ooh. We're going over some stuff Ooh. that's tickling my butt. Oh, I just got a little, you know, <laughs> rat in between me. <laughs> <laughs> a little rat between me. <laughs> yeah. So they, um, they're like, all right, let's get in the elevator, and there is a kind of immediate like. Uh, jarring movement that happens and we hear this <laughs> and everybody, yeah you hear laughing and everybody's cold so everyone's like overcompensating wearing like all their heavy stuff um and the elevator all the glass and all the buildings starts cracking and they have to run down to try to meet up with a friend because they gotta make their carpool yeah yeah carol ann and, and donna have got to get to school and they drop Carol Ann off at her own, like, little school for the gifted. But, yes. And they have some funny banter in the car with the people that pick them up. You can tell Donna really likes one of the boys that's in the Scott! car. Scott! Yeah, that's in Scott! the car. Pool. And then the guy whose mom is driving the carpool has an awful little sister. Named, yes. What's her name? Marcy. Marcy, but Donna calls her Mouth, and that yeah. kind of cracks me up. Okay, Mouth. What? I can go to the party if I want to, but Trisha's not my mother. Yeah. Well, but wait, <laughs> what's funny is that, like, at home, Donna's like, oh, my family. Like, she likes the dynamic of her dad and her stepmom, and but then, like, when she's on yeah. the phone with people or, like, talking to her friends, it's she's, all about, like, oh, my family is, like, not my family. Because, she's, like, mm. just too cool for school when yeah. she's at school. She's always checking herself out in the mirror. Her dad even calls her Narcissus um, as a joke. And Trish really tries to, like, bond with her, like, hey, it's okay that you're, like, stealing my liquid eyeliner. Just, you know, a little bit goes a long way. Yeah, she says less is more. Less is more, yeah. bitch. Less is more. And We're so copacetic here in this house. Yeah, we get... The, the kids have gone off to school, and Pat goes in... She's working inside the high-rise the, gal the... The gallery. Mm -hmm, at the gallery. <laughs> so she's an art curator, and she's working with a current, like, I don't know, artist who's being too much, you know, just... <laughs> yeah, he's apparently, like, a Japanese artist, and he just is so demanding, they're saying, like, and... She's apparently giving him carte blanche to do whatever he wants. So she's complaining about it, but her friend's like, remember, you told him he could do whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. And so he's doing it. This is your fault, girl. And they're also discussing that there's this uh, evening uh, party. night uh, party, you know, to come see the artist. And so we already know we're going to have a time when all the adults are away. That's right. And uh, we also obviously have to figure out what daddy's job is, Josh. What's daddy's job? He, like, owns the place, right? He, like, I would say he's the manager of the entire building. Yeah, he's, like, the city and the Top skyscrapers dog. manager. Yeah. He's like, Mr. He runs, manager. He's Mr. Manager. You're right, Josh, because he, like, runs everything. All of, like, the maintenance and stuff goes through him and... You just get that he's kind of the big wig of the of the building itself. He's and wearing a big wig. Yeah. He is. Well, it's a stash. <laughs> it's a Tom he wears Scare it over stash. his lip. It goes. <laughs> and uh, there's their uh, maintenance people are starting to point out that there are some things going wrong. There's like a, a air conditioning problem where inside the it's building freezing. it's like freezing. And they go in and they see that a whole unit is frozen over, like icicly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the elevator, all the glass that lines the elevator through all the stories. And guys, get this. There's apparently like a hundred floors. I, I think we visually see an indicator that says 99. Yeah. But then I get the idea that the 100th would be like the very top, mm -hmm. like where those... Um, in the towards the end yeah, where when we see them get out. into the window cleaning things yeah, like the roof <laughs> yeah, the roof is on fire but not everything is like really cold guys sorry 
Um, no fires here. So no there's war. no fires happening, but there's a lot of fires actually happening for him. He this is this building is the windows that, are cracking like we said. Yeah, like, and this building isn't that old, and so he's kind of like, what's going wrong with why everything? Why is this happening? My job's on on the line. Yeah, somebody's job is always on the line. And then you know we end up cutting over to Carol Ann's school and. There's a lot of people behind a mirror looking at the class and talking, right? Mm -hmm. And even the kids at the school kind of pick on Carol Ann. Yes. I mean, it's very like Professor X. I feel like we're seeing all these heavily gifted kids, like, sitting... The teacher... Oh, the scene opens up, actually, with this teacher's face, and she's like, there's music playing, it's Chopin, and she's like, you're currently listening to Chopin! <laughs> <laughs> You just blew everyone's ears out with Chopin! Okay, but, like, did they get it? Yeah. That's like, what's... it's over the top. <laughs> and I've never heard so many people say names in a movie oh, in God. all my life. So... And not even Chopin. It's like, yeah. in this one, it's Bruce, Carol Ann, Carol Ann! Donna Scott! <laughs> like, it's just everyone's names being said a thousand times even though it's unnecessary I'm, but, like, I'm right here I hear my name yeah we'll get we'll we'll get there but where are we we're at the school we're at the school we get this like um the, zoom out of these people that are watching the classroom mm -hmm. and and you get the you start getting to the point that all these kids are under some kind of therapy the main professor like the dean of the school is like a therapist and he's talking about them, and one guy's like, hey, it looks like that blonde-headed girl's looking right at me. He's like, well, do you feel, do you think she is? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, that's because she's a manipulative little, you know, just like Bitch. goes in on her. Talking about how Carol Ann basically mass manipulated everyone in her entire neighborhood to think that there were ghosts, and that she has her family convinced now that there's ghosts. I feel terrible in a way. I'm like, okay, so his name is Dr. Seaton. Yes. So here he is. He's supposed to be taking care of all of these children and he has painted such a terrible picture and her parents have supposedly shipped her off to Chicago because this is the best That's place right. for her. We haven't even gotten into the why Carol Ann's in Chicago with yeah. her aunt and uncle. And she's been shipped. And this is exposition that happens when Carol Ann sees her aunt and uncle and they're having their bonding moment mm -hmm. in the kitchen or whatever. But she's, she's been shipped here to go to this like school for these gifted and talented kind of like kids. And he's supposed to be taking care of her, nurturing her, like giving her therapy and uh, supposed to be uh, not suppressing all of these bad things, but I would say certainly not ex like exaggerating it and like trying to get it out of her all the time. And we find out all he's doing is really making things worse, and he's the reason Kane is coming back. And yeah. Why she's seeing visions of Kane is because he stirred up the memory so you know so much that it's called him. In the sessions that they have privately, he's like always trying to coax out more of the the story of why things happened in Buena, wait, what? California, or yeah. I think it's California, right? Yeah, yeah, it is California, but the community they lived in, I forget, I forget the name it. of it, but he says it like a couple times in it, so but I forget, Buena Vista or something, but I don't think that's, what, Cuesta Verde, that's it, Cuesta Verde, that's and so, uh, so he's like, no, Carolyn, you're back in Cuesta Verde, no, she's not, she's in <laughs> Chicago. He's been, he, what's funny is he's projecting all the things that he's doing to her yeah. and saying that those are the things that she does to other people. He's, he's a bad, bad man. Yeah, he's a terrible, terrible, no good, very bad man. Don't like him. <laughs> and he's just suspicious as hell, doesn't believe Carol Ann. He's very manipulative of her, and that's that. <laughs> yeah, and so we basically get that, the whole idea of that when we visit Carol Ann at her school. And then later, afterwards, we're going to go back, back to, back, 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 back. Because um, Donna and Scott, they've decided to let us all know they're going to have a party. You know, so yeah. she's trying to figure out how she can get to go to this party. But she has to babysit her not really relative. Yeah, and she's saying all this over the phone. And um, Carol Ann hears it. But Carol Ann is such like an old soul in this show. She's like, no, I totally get it. As long as we're, you consider me your friend, I don't care if you tell people we're like kind of Kind family. of related. Yeah. I don't care if we're kind of related. As long as, as, long we're, as friends. we're friends. And that is like, I get, <laughs> there's a good line because 
Apparently it's supposed to be this like wonderful shining light. She was born in that house that all of her, or you know, that all of the dead people have been like. Yeah, and she drew all those spirits. Yeah, because she's like this sweet shining light. And but that's he, why Cain went and looked for her. And why he's still continuing to look for her. Because she's such a sweet little angel baby. Like, I love you light, girl. I love you a long time, girly. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that? God, I don't know. Well, I was just singing for him. <laughs> and we do get a little scene of it's when Carol Ann is in a, a therapy session with Dr. Seaton that we get a cut to of Tangina. <laughs> oh, and she's like pouring tea. She's yeah. not pouring it very well. She's. she's Lost sense of some of her faculties. Because she's like honed in on Carolyn. Carolyn's yeah. like reaching through the ether for her. She's because having like she's, a psychic connection. Yeah. And she's under hypnosis. Carol Ann is under hypnosis. And Tangina, she's like, I can, you know, reach out to you. And she's trying to help Carol Ann because Dr. Seen's trying to get like information out of Carol Ann. Like, what's going on in your dream? And she's like talking about her brother. Like, Robbie, Robbie, get away from the window, Robbie. And Carol, and she's all like, wake up, wake up, Caroline. Yeah, push him out of the light, push him out of the light. And she's holding on to the necklace that... And her friends are like, Tangina, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on, honey? And uh, she's holding on to that necklace that, if we recall from Poltergeist 2, was given to her by Taylor, uh, yes, you know, as the... a uh, talisman. And so she's like a protection mm -hmm. thing. And basically, she gets up from pouring tea, kind of, um, and it's like, bye, France, I've got to go. She's like, i got to go. They're like, Tangina. She's like, but, but Carol Ann. We were having a proper cup of tea. Yeah, so. Do you, we, would you like to take your crumpet, dear? <coughs> we know that Tangina is on her way. We all, just, the way. <laughs> all the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. Okay, um, so now, let, yeah, let's get back. So Donna, she's like really wants to go to the party but she's got a babysit and we know that hot daddy Bruce even though he's got a lot going on with the infrastructure of the building he, he still has time to be a fox yeah he's got to get in his tuxedo and <laughs> take me out for a nice steak dinner and then a, a wine and dine night oh yeah. wait no he's got to hang out with his wife they have to go to that gallery they're going to the gallery party Rub elbows, you know. We're rubbing elbows. I'm just tickle rubbing. some balls. Rub tickle some elbows. Balls. Whatever. Um, what I'm getting at is they're leaving the kids they're, alone, yes. <laughs> and so they've told Donna, you know, you got to babysit. Carol Ann's been acting a little weird, and they've all also experienced weird things. Uh, Aunt Pat, while she's getting ready for the party. Uh -huh. um, witnesses how her husband's reflection in the mirror is like hella delayed yeah and donna at one point sees and hears uh carol ann in the wind in the mirror while she's getting ready and then she turns opens the door and there's carol ann and carol ann says what she just said in the mirror yes we get a, a we're starting to get this like mirror play and like a disconnect with the mirror maybe there's like spirits in the mirror that are looking like looking like them everybody. taking on their visage yes show looking at their undergarments and so this is when carol ann actually hears her saying this stuff about like you know, she's not rich. It's kind of my relative. But she tells her anyways, like, no, go to your party. I'll cover for you. Don't worry, girl. I yeah. got you. She wants her to be cool. Cool for school. So Donna, Donna decides goes. that she's, like, she's right. going to go. She leaves Carol Ann in her little onesie. And when she gets to the party, though, the mom is there and decided not to go to the party and said, like, the party's over if the noise gets too loud. Yeah. That was kind of... Uh, strange in a way that they like were having yeah. a, a party at the house but I mean I gather that's why they finally decided to go to the pool uh, and Donna wanted to come off as really really cool yeah, she, so she oh, offers sorry. it up yeah because at first she's like no we can't do this no we can't go down there but I do have the keys to the pool and the John Hancock building does have a big pool and it's apparently like the maybe maybe just in America like the highest of like pool Oh, look at you. The highest up pool. The highest up pool. Our pool is the highest up. <laughs> so, I don't 
don't know about y'all, but like my pool's really high up and such. So. <laughs> well, how would you say that correctly? <laughs> it's up really high. It's up. <laughs> it's my, how you're saying. My pool's the highest up. <laughs> Stop saying it like that. You don't actually say that word like that. Highest up. <laughs> But yeah, oh, so they go God. to the pool. But first she's like, I gotta go sneak and like change the tapes out and the security so they don't see us. Yeah, so she and Scott, okay, but there's there's six of them. And they like sneak around the cameras to like get to the pool area and then they sneak over to get to the security area. And the security guard is like leaving as they approach and she's all like, what's going on? But we know that the security guard has been alerted that there is an alarm that's gone off on like the 70th floor and the camera's not working on yeah. over there as well. And so he's like, oh, I guess I have to like physically go and check on floor 70. It's, and the pool, I think I recall that it was like on the 45th or 44th yeah. floor. So he's got, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. He's going to mm -hmm. be gone for a little bit. Um, so they're all trying to figure out how to, like, doctor up the tapes so they can, like, have fun for a couple yeah, hours. Yeah, Donna kind of knows what to do. She's like, I gotta rewind it, start it. It's kind of like just show, like, for two hours we're coo. For coo. We coo for two hours. We coo. And, uh, while this is all happening, while she is changing up the feeds, let's cut back to Carol Ann and what's been happening since Donna left at the apartment. Yeah, kind of like before this scene, actually, Carol Ann sees uh, Kane again in the window, and he, like, grabs her and, like, brings her pulls up, her, to, pulls yeah. her up, like, almost like she's a magnet, uh -huh. like, up the window. I keep saying window instead of mirror. They are different things. They are different things. <laughs> he pulls her up, like, the side of her wall, which is a big mirror. And like I said, it's almost like she's a magnet, just like going up. And they they kind of tussle. They tussle? Yeah, I saw them tussling. <laughs> it was an old man and little girl tussle. They tussle, and uh, Carol Ann eventually, uh, what happens is that we see that Tangina is on a plane, and she's on her way, but she can feel that there is a fight yes. happening between Carol her, Ann and yeah, Kane. Her psychic connection is so deep, she's just sitting there feeling it on the airplane. And she uses the airplane phone to call somebody. Uh, she calls Dr. Seaton. She wants him to to go over and check on Carol Ann or to be there. That's and right. she even tells him, like, this is your fault. This is all your fault. This is why he's coming in. And um, he, like, hangs up or uh, the he's line gets disconnected. Wife. Yeah, then he's, like, mean to his wife. And it's like, oh, it's that pest from the West calling me. So that's <laughs> what he really thinks about Carol Ann. And he's like, keep keep the food on the low burner or something. Oh my god, and like, don't forget the cilantro. Yeah, don't forget the cilantro. I'm like, what's she making? That sounds yummy. Yeah, and then why are you being such a bitch to You're her? making guacamole, some enchiladas. And some people don't like cilantro because they think it tastes like dish soap. Yeah, for toothpaste. So, Apparently it's know, like some kind of genetic thing. Either you taste it or you don't. Or you don't. Yeah, the like it, you don't. You don't. Good. Well, it's not everything. <laughs> But I think it's specifically like the soap taste. Oh, you know what? We do have to mention that when Carol Ann is at school. She eats and a those, lot of cilantro. She eats a lot of cilantro. Oh. But so we know that like Dr. Seaton might, he, I think in a way is trying to convince himself that she manipulates and everything because he has seen occurrences of what uh, Carol Ann is so scared of. And we get a scene with Carol Ann in his office, and he's in the office with her, but there's a two-way mirror, and all of his colleagues are behind yeah, the two-way right. mirror. And so she's trying to talk to him, you know, like, as in a therapy session, about, like, how she feels and how lonely she is. And he's, like, very condescending to her about... Uh, her, just her emotions and how she feels. And that monster hand comes out, like, throws, yeah. a, throws a cup. Throws a cup, and she's all trying to, you know, she's, again, trying to let him know, like, these are the things that are happening to me. That poltergeist is like, I'm so mad at you. I'm throwing your mug. Coffee mug to the face, but it this hits This one was your that, favorite. It hits that two-way mirror, and it breaks it, and so then Carol Ann sees the reveal that there's people behind the mirror, yeah. but, you know, maybe she knew that. Um, and 
then we have him, Dr. Seaton, trying to like explain away that whole situation, even though he saw this like grotesque hand come out of the desk. And He's throw like, I'm the falling for it now. Yeah. He decides to like try to manipulate the situation and was like, Don't you see it, guys? She's trying to get us to believe that we saw something, but in actuality, you're because he points to there, one of the colleagues, a lady, and she had a coffee mug, and he's like, you broke it. Like, I yeah, feel he's, like, kind of, like, just rewriting the moment. That's true, yeah. But, so she has that tussle with Kane. Yeah. And so, while they're up there fixing the videotapes, they see Carol Ann, who's now, like, traumatized, scared, like, once more running around like, in, the parking, in garage. the parking garage. Yeah. So she's fled the apartment and is running around the parking garage. And so they're like, well, shit, we gotta go get her. We're in trouble. And they, uh, they have her in that onesie again, you know, like yep. with the little feetsies and she's scooting around, running around the parking garage and constantly hearing her name being called by Kane. He's like, we love you, Caroline. Caroline, we love you. We would never hurt you. We you never are hurt you, honey. Angel, Caroline. Caroline, honey. Caroline. <laughs> it's, it's so much Carol Anning. Oh, I, they say it like a million times. I I did read I think that's a little the bit of trivia. Is a <laughs> it's a million out. <laughs> I did read the trivia, and I think it's 121 times. That's, that's like a million. That's crazy. Yeah, there isn't really much difference between 121 <laughs> and a million. And a million. Not when it just comes to like a 98 minute movie. You well, Carol honestly, Anne, that's like at least one Carol Ann a minute. Everybody, let's just count how many times they just say people's names. Because we'll get to where... <laughs> Scott and Donna, they make it into the parking garage, and they're looking for Carol Ann. And <laughs> Carol Ann has fallen into... A puddle. A puddle <laughs> in the parking garage. There's a little puddle of water. And they're but like, Carol Ann, are you swimming? Because that's kind of like got a reflection. It's like a mirror. And so she's like now falling in. She's holding on. And Donna, from like, I don't know... 50 feet away starts screaming as she's running, Caroline! Caroline! <laughs> Caroline! Caroline! But, and she won't stop saying it. But y'all are the only people in the parking garage. Like, that's the only person you would be talking to. Why don't you just scream for help? Maybe yeah. someone can come help. How come it's not like, she's trapped or she's she's gonna drop? Like, no, it's just her name yeah. over and over again. And so they're trying to pull her out, but instead they get pulled in. Yes, and then finally Carol Ann gets pulled in, and then the puddle is just a puddle again. Yeah, this is a regular old boring puddle. <laughs> I tried to step in a puddle once, and I didn't go into like a mystery world with Kane. And you didn't? I didn't. Oh. I was disappointed. This oh, movie I, I have. set me up for a lot of failures. <laughs> well, maybe it's just you, because I've had my own Rev Kane puddle uh, moment. Rub it in my face. <laughs> we, uh, now, we have three missing people on our hands um so the kids in the pool they finally get caught yeah, by they... the security guards and then the security guards go to the gallery and they tell uncle daddy and bruce has to go talk to him and then he's like all right i'm gonna talk to your mamas yeah but they're like where's donna where's scott and where's carol Ann during all of this y'all are all swimming and stealing shit from the market they're and like, like where is everybody they're drinking like, underage and they don't know like we just wanted to go for a dip a dip baby dip a dip dip um so th the kids go away like everybody goes away except for uncle daddy and then the pool freezes over and so does Hal. And then pops Basically. out Scott. Yeah, Scott. They're, they go down to the pool again. Or no, were they just talking to everybody at the pool? Yeah. yeah. And so they turn around. And here pops out Scott. Everything's turned to ice now inside yes, the pool. It's all frozen. And he's frozen. He's like covered in icicles. And it looks like those clumps from your refrigerator. When your refrigerator like over ice. Yeah, like when you need to defrost it. And you've it got to defrost it. That's yeah. what he looked like. You're right. And he looked like what it would look like if you got a little brown ice mixed in too. So Josh, looks... that's when you take your poo-poo water and you freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done that a couple times. Shit. Um, yeah, so he's like out there 
frozen, but like Uncle Daddy is like shivering him up, you know, like patting him down in all the right places and he's starting to get a little warmed up. He starts saying like, they've got Donna. They've, they've got, got Donna. Donna. And they've he's got like, Carolina. who? And they're like, <laughs> that's all you can say. And he's like pointing to the pool, the frozen pool, and then Dr. Seaton shows up and uh, he's so like, So Carol what? Ann, right? Or like a fake Carol Ann, or, or I mean Tangina. Yeah, Tangina does show up, but not at this very moment. Oh, okay. Um, but it's, he's, Dr. Seaton is like, what happened? Because when he looks, the pool's not frozen anymore. And so now we've got to like figure out where everybody, where everybody is. And they also have to go and get Pat and find out where Donna is. And so then Tangina comes along and she's like, I'm here. And she's all reading their minds and they're all like talking about, or Dr. Sen's trying to like set them straight and be like, no, this is just a manipulation of Carol Ann. So Tangina's like, I don't think so. No way. Uh-uh. Here I am. Carol and then all of a sudden she like falls to the ground right and turns into like a mummy yeah like I mean we're really speeding up all of this but that's okay um she does she like ends up crumbling and then out pops Donna out of Tangina's body like she comes there she Tangina says a few sage words they start to believe her and that like oh they are really dealing with some like poltergeist plane and then she like falls over she's like (laughs) whoa Donna bursts oh, out of Tangina's body. It's probably like the best part of the movie, or like the gnarliest, yeah. like best, but like one of the coolest moments in the movie is when she's busting, busting out. She's busting out. <laughs> she wants the world to know you wear your collar popped in your polo. Nineteen eighty-eight. Woo! Oh, we should. I think we should go ahead and just. Seal, sign, seal, deliver. Sign, seal, deliver. Right now, yours. like yeah. huge superstars. So they pull Donna out of Tangina. <laughs> yep, we're not even joking. They really do. They really pull her out. And she's not okay, to say the least. No, and she's like not there yet. They're all trying to like. What I, what we do have is like a little homage to the first movie where Carol Ann and mama joe beth are in the tub getting all cleaned up well they've got don in the tub they're all cleaning her up and dad's all like patting her and we've got pat who's having like a meltdown and she's all starting to get accusatory and being all like carol ann is a brat and this all started because carol ann oh yeah it's so weird like she flips a switch they go from their like happy little family to like i knew i should never let my sister send her to me that brat she's like a little brat brat like she's just going She's just a brat, 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 and I hate her, and I don't like her, and she's not family to me. Yeah. And uh, Bruce, who's known this little girl like a month, is like, yo, whoa, 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 calm down. You do love her. Don't talk like that. You're just going through something. You're just going through something. Let's figure this out together. But Tangina had mentioned, you know, the other side. and uh, the, She comes... There's this moment where Daddy Uncle Man... Brucey baby and Pat they're like running around through all these floors they're still trying to find Carol Ann and Tangina and the, they're all locked in this meat locker and the pigs are coming alive they're all frozen pigs <laughs> yeah. and they're all like oink 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 like coming alive that's pretty gross it is and then like it starts to flood and Tangina comes out of the flood water yeah, it's a, this effect that they do where it's obviously like they're shooting straight down into like a hole and it's filling up but they're trying to make it look like it's uh, everything's upright yeah and Tangina's supposed to be standing up but it's obviously she's like down because you like, see the pressure of like I'm saying this rudely but like the pressure of like her double chins or yeah down, you know it's yeah. obvious that she's laying well down. and her hair too like yeah. how her hair is laying but it's okay it's all right it's because the main point is she hands them that necklace of hope she's and like, love outside in and she is not talking about how you get that dick in you know she's like outside from the out, in from the outside in you start from outside in baby you put it outside in. in that's right this outside is why this podcast in. is an explicit podcast guys <laughs> put it from the outside in so Tangina is like outside in she like throws the like talisman necklace thing but what is, I don't think she grabs it. I think she gingerly hands it to them. No, she throws it and it loops around Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and she's all like, 
bless light, you. And light fills the room. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, and we do have this like crazy battle. You ain't joking if you ain't joking. You ain't joking if you're not joking. Um, we have like a, this wall battle where like Carol Ann is like coming through this like mirror that's in the wall to or a door, something, and Bruce and Pat are like trying to pull her through. And like, oh, it's like dead Tangina is like, that's not her! It's just fucking crazy! It reminds me of the. Uh, the Haunted Mansion door when it's like breathing. Yes. But like to the max. Oh my gosh. Honestly guys, so much of this movie is like doesn't quite make sense. There's so <laughs> many like holes, like plot holes yeah. that are in it where I'm just like, hey, was there supposed to be like another 15 minutes of footage that helps well, even, support some of the shit that y'all are doing? Even sitting here like running it down with you guys, it's like, man, this movie's all over the place. It's just people running around. This big the old skyscraper, skyscraper, which is a cool idea, but it's just so... Part of it, too, is that, it, you know, they got, like, a forced PG-13 rating. Like, the studio told them, you have to make this PG-13. Yeah. I think if they could go, gone balls to the wall and made it, like, the first rated R um, poltergeist film, they could have really done more, but just made it unabashedly horror. Yeah. Done it, more it things really like... It really is lacking yeah. in fright and scare and in genuine horror, like... The, there's some like practical effects there's some magic with the lighting there's magic with like all the camera work that's happening with the mirrors the fact that they're using the you know the doubles and that they you know built the sets that mirror uh -huh. each other and stuff like all of that is neat but the story itself lacks so much that you can't really fill it in you're just watching it perplexed and Everyone's trying to make it work. You can tell the actors are doing their best. And they're Tom, great actors. Yeah, Tom Skerritt's very charming still in this movie. And he seems like a sweet uncle. Like, he plays that part really well. And Nancy Allen sells the, the conflicted, like, bitchy step-esque yes. parents. You know, she is a step-parent to Donna, but... You know, it's it's okay. It's, okay. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. But it's we're, just all over the place. I'm like, man, are we only at like the halfway point? I'm like, shit, yeah. we gotta speed this We've up. We've got Donna also who's so in convoluted. that bathtub, you know, and Dr. Seton is like, I'm gonna go find your parents. And he goes off to find parents, but then he gets tricked with this elevator with what he thinks is Carol Ann. I mean, everything is just poltergeists or ghosts or these souls that, you know, are start like, to yeah. not maybe embody but like they have they ha they've seen these people through the mirrors and they're so reflecting they, back them yes. but it's like the poltergeist reflected in the mirror they can only be in the mirror or something reflective but so he goes he's waiting for the elevator he kind of gets tricked um and he's trying to like open the elevator doors like he's trying to unhinge them and he gets it open but then he gets a little nudge he gets a little push push and the tush tush and we're like what also the sound effect of the scream the that you know <laughs> yeah as he's going down it's the strangest like were three people falling <laughs> that like you hear different like tones and like there's multiple voices so I don't know maybe there's some echoing that happens in a elevator shaft but he falls down obviously dead which is unheard of in poltergeist movies we don't really there's not really anybody killing in these I mean, yeah, certainly like there's said, the first at like, stake, but, murder or death by a poltergeist yeah in we've the had franchise. like the death of the grandma in the second mm -hmm. one and she died natural causes were left to assume i mean carol ann helped her kind of over the other side or yeah you know it was kind of and we get tangina like that, here but. who sacrifices herself but a murder like a, somebody killing someone we haven't gotten that yet in a poltergeist movie nope. and it's it's Donna, but it's not Donna. But I, I get why they're doing it. And they say it as the, as she and Scott, or not Scott, they're just like the poltergeist people are, but in their skin. It's so hard to explain. Yeah. Um, but she says like, like, and they thought it was her because there's so many cameras around. And that's like something they don't even follow up with in the movie. It's like, yeah, this is one of those holes because all of a sudden Donna and the Scott are out of the mirror walking around. Because remember, he 
pulls yeah. her face. So I, that's kind like of like a weird... tugs and tears skin off her all face. All the other times they could only operate pretty much within the mirror. The mirror. But maybe this is when they finally come out, because later Kane is like in the face of... Yeah, they, maybe they've broken yeah, that wall, because Carol Ann has though. been taken over to the other side. But maybe we just figured out our, our, our issue. But, okay, fine. Um, Maybe, but I I caught one time when I was watching, but I was listening to what Donna says is like you know, and they think it's her that like the cameras are gonna pick up Donna pushing Doctor Set down the elevator shaft yeah. because there's still gonna be a dead body at the end of this movie, right? Like he he's dead, he's real real dead. They find him, Pat and Bruce do. When they're trying to get through the elevator shafts, they find him, and he's on top of an elevator, but yeah. just floors he's down. He's just, like, taking a little ride. He looks like he's just draped over. <laughs> they don't go for a lot of gore in this movie. That's why the scene where Donna does pop out of Tangina is very shocking, because you haven't, I haven't really seen anything quite like that in this series. Typically, it's like, you know, we get the nasty skeletons and stuff from the first, or, like, the vaginal wall in the first, oh you know, things like that. But this is... Like, real body horror. Yes. In part three. Definitely. We don't have those big CGI effects of the monster, uh -huh. like, you know, protecting the doorway in the first one, where Joe Beth is, like, screaming in her underwear. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so he's, so the doctor's dead, which, yeah, he's the... He's the bad guy of the movie. Like, he's the human bad guy of the movie. Yeah. We don't like him. He was up to no good anyways for no reason. Like, why does he have all of this this uh, adverse feeling towards a child? Yeah, he that brought... He yeah, it, it was almost like his negative dark energy really helped bring all this about again. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to to figure him out because I don't understand why he approaches Carol Ann with... It's like he's just working in the wrong cruelty. profession. Like, yeah. just really doesn't like children. But yeah, what if <laughs> what if that's how he treats all of his uh, yeah. patients, and none of them end up having what he has diagnosed them with? Huh? I hadn't thought of that Very yet. Very interesting. Very mm. interesting. Okay, but yeah, so he's dead. He's gone. Or bye bye. And now we <laughs> kind of just have our core group. Um, we've got Bruce and Pat, who have now been. Uh, they've fought their way and burst through into the parking garage. Now they're in the parking garage, but the parking garage is covered in ice and all the cars are covered in tons of snow. And it looks like the shining up yes. in there. <laughs> and there, then there's this weird, like cars are attacking them and they're now it's Christine knocking into each other. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the ice is gone and the cars aren't on fire and then yeah they've been like running around on their knees crawling screaming uh, here's an, it's another one of those scenes where everyone's screaming like Bruce Bruce uh, but they're the only ones there I just don't understand why why is that what you're, why aren't you saying like I'm over here this is my point you know like to locate why does it have to it's just and then all the yeah. ice like you said all the ice and stuff disappears but they're all wet yes and then it's like it rains for a second there there's like a friend who comes up and is like, hey, uh, Donna and Carol Ann and Dr. Sentner are upstairs waiting for you. And you know that this person is just another poltergeist that's taking on the visage of the friend because he's dead. We know the doctor is dead and we know Donna's not looking for Carol Ann because Donna's nope. like possessed and still in the <laughs> Getting her face world. torn and, off by yeah. Scott and pushing people down elevators. And so we know that this is a dupe. This person is trying to send them up, but there they go. And we need them to, to go all the way up because they're in the parking garage. And they got to get all the way up to the 100th floor of this climax. Um, they've got to get it up for the they've climax. They've got to get it up for the climax. <laughs> uh, and they have to go up all these floors. We get our, like, Tower of Terror moment where they're, like, in the elevator, like, going up, going down. And yeah. Kane is, like, grabbing them, trying to pull them through. And, and the thing is, this version of Kane is just not that scary. Kanan in two is genuinely frightening. Well, and there's no makeup really to Kanan yeah. in two. It's sad just though person, that just that person yeah, was who was dying. Yeah, looking like that, and he left his terrifying. legacy in yeah. a really cool, like in a cool way. Like, and he even that was one of the reasons he still wanted to do it, even though he knew he was sick, because he was like, one of, yeah, he was like hey, why not? And he does <laughs> have like a casting credit in um, 
in this movie. I think it's they use his voice. Okay, and that makes so sense. He does get credit um, in Poltergeist Three, even though I guess it would be posthumously. Yeah. So, oh goodness! But and that's also only like the scary part of it is like hearing his voice sometimes. Um, except when they're just saying Carol Ann's name a million Here times. Here I am. That's not Here I am. And Carol Ann's been gone for a while in this film, and we really get to see the acting of like Tom Skerritt and Nancy Allen trying to go over the top. They're really trying to yeah, sell this it, movie to you. It does really become their movie, like in the third act. It's like the kids are kind of, well, other than Carol Ann, it's like Donna, okay, she's had her moment, is yeah. now being taken care of, or, you know, she doesn't really get another moment, does she? She's just fine again later. She's fine. She comes <laughs> in that light and stuff. So yeah. the, the, the third act is. Uh, Bruce, Bruce and, and Pat. Pat and it's their arc it's Pat's arc from being like a I don't know kind of like a duplicitous aunt who yeah. we thought we had genuine moments at the beginning and maybe we did but you know the building I itself think... could have been corrupted and her feelings could have been corrupted and maybe that's why she starts calling her a brat maybe she doesn't feel that way it's that's just... what, how I feel I bet it was something along those lines Mixed with just like the fear of like, what did I bring into my home? Yeah, everything was fine before exactly. she, little Carol Ann came. Even though I loved her, now it's like shit. She's really yeah. effing it up for everybody, and she does mention, you know, that that's her family. But Bruce is her husband, and she feels like Donna is her daughter. And she's like, I do want to make this right now. Like she, yeah, she she's the one at the end. Like, she has to fight off Kane. This yeah. becomes, like, Poltergeist 3 becomes, like... Her arc. Her, yeah, <laughs> her she's story the arc, uh, mainly. protagonist of all of this. Or she just has a, a good full circle moment. And she has the necklace. She's been fighting off Kane. She's even decapitated Kane at one point during her battle with him. He's absorbed into the other side, everybody she loves. And she's, like, pleading for Tangina to, like, help her. And Tangina! There's... Like, everybody just cries, screams people's names in this movie. And that's, I would not, like, almost say 60% of the script is names. Yeah. I, when it comes to dialogue. I mean, y'all correct us, bring us the facts, but we might exaggerate a little bit. But, yeah, I'd, I'd at least say 50% is name. Like, is a person's yeah. name that's being said over and over again. And like, that also loses its... You know, pizzazz. Like I, I'll say, for a short, concise movie, it's kind of boring. Well, I wouldn't say it's concise. Okay, I was it's just very looking convoluted. At you like, what? I was meaning more so the running time. For a short yeah. running time, it's very convoluted and almost like borderline boring. It at is parts. boring. It has some cool moments, and like from what I remembered as a kid, I always loved part three. Yeah. Because of like a lot of the set pieces, and you know, when you flip around on TV and you find it, you're not watching the whole movie. There's some redundant scenes that yeah. are happening. You know, I feel like we've already been there a couple of times when we get to the end and it is just Pat and she's like pleading and then finally she's battling, but it's like battling with her words. She's just like, Tangina said that if someone loves them <laughs> on the other side, then it'll all be okay and, and they'll come back. And I, I don't know. I'm like, really? If that was it, like if love always prevailed, then... She's like, I, I feel thought like all this have was occurrences. She's like, I thought all this was bullshit until I got really, really scared, and now I'm gonna, yeah, let's do what Tangina says. <laughs> like, so here I am, and I love you, and, <laughs> and, and and this is when they've gone to the top. They've gotten on the window washing machine. They've yes. Gone down. They've descended and had that scary like. Because we think it's a hundred stories, yeah, so they've had to pretty intense. It's high scale up. down it a little bit, and then they have to bust a window, and then they're sucked through. And yeah, Bruce gets he gets all sucked. He gets, he gets all sucked. <laughs> Bruce gets sucked through the window. Caroline comes to the window, and she's all like, "No, here, you save yourself, save to Donna, Pat, and Bruce." Yeah. And I'll sacrifice myself. You don't love me. And then Dawn's like, no, we can do this all together, girl. Like, I do love you. Sorry. I had a moment. Pat, yeah. She's like, no, I really yeah, do Pat. love you. But then she's like saying that to the wrong. It's not Carol Ann. It's just Kane in Carol Ann's body. Because then she, like, she turns her head. Carol Ann turns her head to look into all this, like, light. And then she turns back to Pat. And it's Kane's face. But on Carol Ann's body. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, probably... One of the only like ugh, jump yeah. like moments. But it also like, kind of looks like she has a funny mask on. Yeah, but then but. it's yeah, it kind of gives me Halloween three 
like vibes the witch uh, uh-huh. um okay it so, is one of the only big jump scares in the movie though yeah kind of works and it's pretty late in the movie to be having a jump scare but um here we okay so we're at the let's get to the end where she is like i've got my necklace kane i'm you're not gonna win Yes. I've got love. And then finally Tangina shows up and like spirit Tangina. Nan- yeah, Nancy Allen goes through that window because uh-huh. Carol Ann disappears. And it's like a winter wonderland up yeah. there. And I just like, I do like how that looks. It's one of and the And she's more... in that like silver gown. Yeah, just and... like the shot. It looks really cool. Her hair is uh, wet, but like damp, wavy. And she just like, I'm sorry, she's serving fierce. Like Nancy Allen is gorgeousity. And that is one of the things about the movie. Like the imagery sometimes is better than the movie as a whole. Like some yeah. of the things look really cool. Concepts are really cool. It's just not. It's like if you showed me some pictures, well. some stills of it, I'd be like, oh yeah, this looks like it's the of makings of a really great movie. And then they edited it terribly together. Or it, and maybe it just, just didn't wasn't have enough rough. like substance in the writing. And yeah, it probably just wasn't there to begin with. Just Especially wasn't if there. The script, they're saying, yeah. Here but yeah, but once they're inside, or Nancy Allen is inside the building. It's now back in their apartment. It's like back to this winter wonderland. And she's pleading with Kane. She's decapitated Kane. Tangina comes back and she's like, I'm the one with the power. I'll <laughs> lead you to the light. Oh, Tangina! And yeah, Nancy Allen Pat is just like... keeps saying Tangina. Oh, you know, we're just trading Tangina. name for another name. And Tangina takes Kane into the light. She, she very, into the light! Very sweetly, she takes his hand. She's like, come with me, honey. She turns around and she tells Pat, like, you did good, baby girl. You did real good. She's like, yeah, Caroline, I could have done this in the last movie, but I wasn't ready to kill my, like, sacrifice myself yet. Sorry, girl. <laughs> I'm there. I don't know what but she's you like, saw, if I, but... But if I have to suffer through one more goddamn tea party... <laughs> yeah, I was just about to make a tea joke. Like, <laughs> you saw how I was pouring tea, you know? I'm just one foot out the door, okay? I, I'm ready to go, darling. Here we go. But she does. She leads Kane to the light, and then Pat's standing there just screaming into the light, like, Bruce, Donna, where are you? Caroline? <laughs> gotta get those names one more time and then they come out of the light and they all embrace oh, this and like, they do like happy a like hug. makeshift family yeah they just decide to this stick is a, fingers and butts and <laughs> we're the real deal this is what a family looks like this is it's a family is a family is a family yes. right here and they uh, you get that moment where Tom Scared, it's like just motorboating Nancy <laughs> Allen. With his chest hair. And Laura Flynn Boyle is motorboating Tom Scared's ass. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. It's intense. It's the climax of the movie. And yeah. Carol Ann's one last look to the screen as she winks and then dives into. <laughs> <laughs> like, slow your roll. It's a yeah. child. <laughs> I know. I was like, just like thinking, like, how am I, where, where should I end this? Like, <laughs> she just walks away from her yeah. gross She dives family. into the mirror and it all ends. And here we yeah, are. They're no, hugging. None of that happens. They, they hug, give each other little hugs. Hugs and kisses. And it's the end. Doing a bunch of I love yous. And then we get a laugh. We do get a laugh like that to cut away at, as we see the Hancock. The yes. cock. We see we that see big the, Chicago cock. in the, the hand in the cock building. <laughs> and there's and like the lightning. And <laughs> And Black. then it's like, well, they never made a fourth. Well, for obviously reasons, Heather War tragically passed away. Yeah. And there has been a remake. Would they really have sacrificed Tangina and killed her off just for her to like have to come or back for, again? I or? guess she. They would have to bring her back. They wouldn't just be like, yeah, we killed her in the third movie, and but it didn't for no reason. Kane's still around. Yeah, or you know, for requel purposes, we <laughs> might, you know you've got to bring back a legacy character and. It would have to be like Joe Beth Williams Joe Beth, or yeah. Nancy Allen from the third, because a lot of people have died. Yes, that were yeah. in this movie in the movies. It the cur that you know they called the Poltergeist curse, but um, okay, so we're done. Yeah, we're heading to the Price Tower. We're we'll be back in the second half in just a few seconds. We'll tell you all about the Price Tower and our experience there. It's supposed to be haunted, also. Yeah, forgot to mention that. It's a little um, boogie boogie. And we'll give you our final thoughts on the movie, our knife ratings, favorite scenes. Tell you what's coming up 
Uh, oh, we Max, got some uh, big, big news, that, guys. That's worth sticking around so, for. Stick around. We'll be back in like five seconds. Enjoy a little <laughs> bit of Bad Athlete. Scream Queens Horror Road Trip Podcast. Here we are. We're back in the car, heading home. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Woo! And we just had the best little, like, overnight staycay in a historical hotel. Yes. I mean, we told you earlier that we were visiting the inn at Price Tower in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And we did that very thing. And it just happens to belong to, like, the member of the Historic Hotels of America and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. So it is a well-preserved lady. And it's also a part of... Sorry, I thought we had written those down. Part of the National... It's considered a National Historic Landmark, and it's part of the National Register of Historic Places. So that is cool, too. It is... So there's so much value historically it's and culturally that, you know, our nation wants to preserve it forever. Yeah. And, and so, it, like I mentioned, it's a part of the National Trust for Historic Preservation because of that. Because they want to keep it up, um, looking pretty, but they also want to make sure that it stays true to its original design of 1956. And it is. Like, it was so funny. Like, we, as we were telling you, we got a two-story suite, and it was so nice but also very retro a lot of the uh what would you call them like the fixtures like the sinks and the toilets and the showers and even like the lighting and um the air ducts and the vents like were all very old school um that's why you know we wondered like it's a very cool two-story suite and we had wondered why the price was pretty reasonable and I think that's a big reason is because of the accommodations aren't like new and pristine and modern and you know it's it's definitely like a flashback to the 50s when you get into your room absolutely I walked in there and I kind of felt like I was in an old like Disney um clip that you see from time to time where they'll show like Walt Disney walking around and what looks like his office and everything just seemed so very of that time I was taken back like there were um like seats that were built built in furniture to the walls and like Josh had mentioned the fixtures were very much of like 1956 and that, I guess, is why. It's because you're not going in there getting the amenities like an LED bathroom, um, you know, uh, what is that, glass uh, mirror, and you're not getting those, like, waterfall bathroom shower fixtures, but you're just going back and seeing what it would have looked at at a different time, and yeah. it was nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Our shower was really cool. It had, like this weird step down with like a seat in it. It was very retro, very cool. And the hotel itself, like it's, you can see it as you're driving to town. There's other taller buildings because Bartlesville was basically built by oral, oral, ooh, oil barons. Um, you know, the Phillips 66 headquarters are there and there's a big Phillips 66 building. And um, the Price brothers themselves were also like oil barons. Yeah, and the, they... it was commissioned for the Price uh, it was commissioned by Harold C. Price for his H.C. Price Company, which is mm -hmm. Oil Pipeline and Chemicals. That's right. And they still have, like, their bedrooms and their offices preserved way up on the top two floors. And they're currently renovating, like, the restaurant that's up on top. So we didn't get to dine up there. We dined below. Yes. Had a few cocktails. And... Copper restaurant. That was fun. But it was... What was interesting about our little eat at dining experiences it's kind of how we figured out what was going on in the community it was we went down in the cafe and we're like where is everyone and they're all outside because there's this festival which was wonderful we happened upon like a multicultural festival right outside our hotel 
But we were like, no, it, it was like 97 degrees. We're like, okay, we'd rather be the losers that sit inside with nobody else and have our cocktails. We went out later and joined the festivities, but I don't know. It had been a long drive. We were just wanted to be comfortable, have a nice drink and some air condition, air conditioning, you know? So yeah. that's what we did. And we went and joined the festivities later. It was really cute in their plaza because it's like the Price Tower Plaza. They were doing a multicultural festival and we saw like... Uh, Chinese lion dancers. We saw Native American dancing. There were all kinds of booths with like Mexican food and Indian food and um, desserts. We got a few desserts oh, yeah, to few desserts. go with what would be our dinner. We didn't know what we were going to have for dinner yet, but we decided we were already going to pick up dessert from this little dessert truck. They were doing tango lessons at one point in the night. And it was just really cute. It was felt like very much like a community, like a really nice little community nestled in the hills uh, north of Tulsa is where Barsville is located. Yes. And I would say there's not like, at least we, there's not a whole lot to do in Barsville, but it's charming. Like it's definitely good for like an overnight. You can jot down to Tulsa, but God, seeing the tower itself, it's just beautiful. Like very ornate. We were reading something about how like he was really working on like triangles was kind of like his whole theme. Equitra. Equal, equal triangle, whatever that word is, is like his fascination. So he built his whole hotel based on that equal triangle form. And even the rooms, yeah, they were triangle shaped, the two stories. It was really cool because our we could access our hotel room on two floors. They're like, you can get in on the 12th or the 11th. The 12th will take you to your bedrooms. The 11th to like your living room like the living and room kitchen. your yeah, bathroom and your little kitchen. Yeah, it was really cool. It was like floor to ceiling windows. So we had to use the little pulley system on the windows to open them up. And that was fun. Um, Cause we had a panoramic view of Bartlesville and the wonderful hills. It starts to get rather hilly. I wouldn't say mountainous, but it gets pretty hilly. Eventually it gets into the Ozarks once you get into Arkansas, but you can tell that the terrain has changed from like Oklahoma City where it is the plains and get into like northern Oklahoma where you have lots of beautiful lush hills, lots yeah. of trees. And yeah, northeast. Like the e more east you go, the more like green and more hills there are in mm -hmm. Oklahoma. We did get to drive, you know, in, uh, well, we've just drove through Pahuska, so if that kind of tells you where it's nestled in just this oil barren landscape where all of these billionaires built these towns and people rushed to them and then the big boom and bang of oil happened and yeah. the tycoons left and the towns are trying to thrive. Up until the 60s, that area of the country, including Tulsa and Barlesville, had more billionaires than anywhere else in the world, and it was because of oil, but, you know, there was oil at some point has a bust, and I guess that happened kind of in the 60s, so you could tell that Bartlesville at one time might have been, like, a great city. If, you know, if maybe the oil would have stayed, they could have kept building, um, might have been, like, the third big city in Oklahoma, but it didn't quite happen, but it's a fun little place to visit for a night. It's, it, yeah, the scenery, it's a, it's a great overnight. And then we had some decent food. We, like said, mentioned uh, getting the, the dessert, but we went and had some wonderful, just basic American food, um, comfort food. Yeah, I had chicken fried steak. Justine had like this loaded mac and cheese. That was amazing. Oh, I, it was so good. It took and, a few bites. Mm, so. It was like pulled pork and this like wonderful special barbecue sauce they had on it. It wasn't what I originally ordered. I wanted to get the meatloaf. I'm kind of a meatloaf aficionado. I love to try <laughs> meatloaf wherever I go. If you tell me your mama's meatloaf is the best, I'm going to say prove it. But she they, will. they couldn't prove that their mama's meatloaf was the best. They were ran out. I appreciated that because it meant they made them loaves fresh. And then we found, like, a little candy shop that was right next door. And it was still open at, like, 9 o'clock at night. So we went in and got, like, a few little truffles. And... We are like, let's get some tandy for the road tomorrow. <laughs> we'll get our tandy. Um, and then we, you know, made our way back and took in the festival a little bit more. That's when we saw the salsa dancing was the uh, kind of nighttime. It was nice. There was a breeze. It was much better to be out there enjoying the festival once the sun had set because <laughs> it wasn't 90 something degrees mm -hmm. 
Um, and then we kind of just chilled in our really nice suite. Like, that was one of the things we wanted to do was just hang out there. You know, it's like this two-story suite. And we were on the 11th, 12th floor, so it just felt fun. And so we hung out there. And then we're woken at, like, 6 in the morning to a fire alarm going off. We wake up to, you know, the lights flashing in our room. and the, the butt, We're running around like chickens with our heads cut off trying to grab a few things in case there really was a fire you know i'm like where are my keys where's my wallet you know and then we're like running <coughs> down the stairs which are like outside we had to go all the way down and then it, it was... wasn't until we hit like maybe the 10th or 8th floor that i realized that the other floors weren't lighting up um it like took a while for other floors to be like awoken i guess i don't know yeah i don't um, think the other floors really did get woken fire department up. came though and there were a group of us that were out and mm -hmm. kind of waiting it was not the best uh wake up call that you wanted on your sleep in sunday but... i will say it caused us not to stay for the tour today we were going to do a two o'clock tour we got woken up at six we had to be checked the other thing was we had to be checked out by 11. And then try to figure out something to do for three hours in Bartlesville. Well, on a Sunday, if you guys don't know, in Oklahoma and in the South, in the Bible Belt, everything shuts down on a Sunday. So there yeah, really was a large amount of businesses yeah. closed down. And if you're in, you know, a rural area, all those businesses. So there wasn't going to be a lot to do today if we were to stay. Nothing that we could fill three hours in this little town to do. So we canceled our tour and... <sighs> we got out of there a little earlier today, but we still had a great time. It is very much worth seeing Frank Lloyd Wright's only realized skyscraper. It is an architectural wonder. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And now that it's being preserved, it was sold to the um, uh, Price Tower Arts um, like foundation in 2000, and so... Ever since then, they preserved it and turned it into a place where people could come and stay. Now it's the inn at Price Tower. Um, for a while, when the Price Company sold it to Phillips 66, they didn't use it as an actual place to work. They used it as storage, which was nice because that meant people weren't messing with it for uh -huh. years. So it naturally did get to hold on to a lot of those fixtures and... Um, something about Oklahoma in the 80s is we really wanted to knock Modernize. shit down and um, I'm so glad we didn't with that building. I think we would have regretted it immensely. Yeah, I feel like that was more of a thing too going on in Oklahoma City like the tearing down and modernizing everything but yeah luckily that area was not spoiled. So now um, that we are heading, we're now back on that 35, we're headed home and we are going to just give you our review recap. Oh, we've already done that. Uh, what are we doing? Yeah, we're just going to give you our star or stabs. <laughs> our knives. Well, first, we're going to do our favorite moments. Yeah. And then, like we always do, do you have a favorite moment? Or I'll go with mine because I know I have one. And I mentioned it earlier. The best part of the movie is when Donna is coming out of Tangina's body. Yes. <laughs> that whole scene is probably like the most frightening. And they're like, okay, this has, this is, there's a cool idea here. This is something interesting that I haven't seen before. It's kind of one of those only moments in the movie is that, which is kind of sad because not even the stuff leading up to that. I do like the whole puddle, then falling into the puddle, and then coming out Tangina. That would be, I guess, my favorite moment. Okay, well, my favorite moment is uh, them falling through the puddle, and the I kind of ended it with like Scott coming out of the water or the pool area. Yeah. It's all snowy um just mainly because it, it, it i like that it's using some like cgi and it's not using it too terribly um and the idea of all these elements like being in the water and it being icy and it it was kind of scary i guess like that's one of the moments where you have something at stake she they think she's going to be drowning other than everyone screaming carol ann carol ann a thousand times carol ann <laughs> that scary arm that keeps showing up, uh, pulling them all in. There's just a moment where you're like, oh no, what is Scott and Donna and Carol ain't gonna do? And how in the hell are we gonna get to the end with this? It probably is the most tension filled, filled moment. Because a lot of the other stuff is really goofy, especially like the, the climax of this movie is so like, okay, whatever, guys. Like with Tangina giving her the necklace and yeah. Pat being like, Tangina! You know, over and over. And there's just like not a, a whole lot of 
tension. There's not any dread in this movie like the first two really accomplished. Um, there's things I really want to like. It's one of those from my childhood when I think back on it. I'm like, oh, that's a fun movie. The skyscraper, the puddle, you know, the car, the garage scenes, you know. But it just, when you actually sit and watch it from start to finish, it's hard. Yeah, there's some huge gaping holes of information or even just, like, substance where the actors themselves do quite well to convey emotion. You're just kind of like, I just don't know what you're emoting. You know, like, I don't really... I don't know. There's just not a lot at stake, like we've mentioned. And I do love all of the camera work that they do, especially with those mirrors. The idea that they had stand-ins that would have to, you know, really, like, time themselves well mm -hmm. to really buy it. You know, yeah. you're believing that they're looking at themselves. Yeah, I don't think we talked about that in the first half. A lot of the mirror imaging was, like, double sets. Like, there was a double set. There was someone on the other side pantomiming, doing everything the other actors were doing. Um, not all of the, not all of the mirror work, but, um, you, pretty much things when the camera is straight on to the mirror. I feel yeah. like they had, like, you know, like you mentioned, like, all these great elements. It was like a stew of great elements. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good idea, but then, like, when you really flesh it out, there was... It was a very watery stew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that stock was not very... Flavorful, Favory, yeah. yeah. I'm. I hate that I'm giving it a, like an analogy with stew, but yeah. it's you know all the ingredients might have been quality, but it was just overworked, overcooked, whatever. Um, it's definitely if I'm gonna rank my my poltergeists in order, um, I think I, mean, I I really like two. I might put two above one, two one. Three, even though one is amazing they're just different they go off um one is like we'd mentioned more of the haunted house-esque kind of uh, scary movie and then you have two which is like no this is a bad guy here's your here's your bad guy we don't like him and kane is a really bad guy mm -hmm. he's just not scary in three is the problem he's yeah. so scary in two it just without that that same actor just loses some of its punch but yeah yeah star ratings you go first i'm gonna give it two i'm gonna give it two knives not stars yeah, stars i don't know um, what show i'm on all of a sudden <laughs> he thinks he's siskel and eber well, they did thumb so you <laughs> well who's the who's the people that do the five star i give it five stars i don't know a lot, Michelin like a lot of people. I'm like a lot of people give stars, but we're giving not knives. Us. We're giving knives, and I'm giving two full knives, not a half or anything. Just two full knives, one for each hand. Yeah, I was gonna go 1.5, but I'm gonna give an extra half for Tom Scarrett. So the I'll mustache. Go two down. knives also for that. <laughs> Get a whole half just for Mr. Daddy Scarrett and his delicious mustache. And don't worry, guys, just because we didn't like this movie, we have some big stuff lined up, some movies that we really enjoy coming up, and we have a really big trip coming next month, and let's tell them, drum roll. Drum roll. Oh my gosh, we guys. We are going to... Salem, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We are going to do a double, a double... Double episode. Uh-huh. They'll be released a month apart. They're not both going to be dropped in October. October, we are bringing you Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. I mean, September 30th marks Hocus Pocus 2 dropping. Yep. And so we're going to bring you Hocus Pocus and visit... The locations where they filmed it's and so fun. it's gonna wait. be I mean, it's it's one of those like the child in me is gonna be bursting yeah. and uh, you know we're gonna be visiting a lot of places in Salem and we're gonna also cover the witch that will be November's episode is Roger <laughs> Robert Eggers, Eggers. <laughs> we're just saying Roger Eber yeah. I was like oh I love uh, the Witch. So that should be exciting. That's October and November. So you know what's coming up. And then we'll have some kind of Christmas episode for you in December. That'll round out our burrs. So stay tuned, guys. Yeah. We're so excited for what's coming up. I hope you guys are as well. Thanks for listening. Thank you for um, giving us reviews and ratings on um, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, please uh, continue to do so. That really helps us. 
appreciate it. Um, thanks for following us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, all the places going to our website, screamqueenspodcast.com. We love you. Thank you for your support. You guys are the best. And we will catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye.